let's uh, before we come to more nuggets from mm. the playbook of a spy i want to talk about kashmir and i want to talk about kashmir because i know it's been the magnificent obsession of your professional life even your personal life do you think you got kashmir wrong and i ask this with some consideration that 370 gets abrogated a lot of kashmir watchers you you me i don't claim to have your expertise but people who have been obsessed with kashmir for a long time say oh my god this is going to lead to massive turmoil kashmir is going to backslide all attempts at peace are going to now collapse it turns out it could be argued that the modi government's instinct was right you know kashmir seems to be thriving street protests are not present you yourself a few days ago in an interview said separatism is pretty much over in kashmir not terrorism but separatism what i said was that separatists are almost over but separatism uh, may take longer it's still in the mind that okay. because radicalism is increasing you know and uh, the two by which you mean that young people are getting islamized yeah, more than before that, that's right that's right you see now we put a ban on the jamaat mm. for 5 years mm. so the the leader the infrastructure all that is under control most of the leaders are uh, under arrest and things but uh, the sympathizers are growing mm. and that's not a good sign you know it's not a good sign for times ahead because kashmir has always been i mean uh, the greatness of kashmir as you know has been its kashmiri you know, togetherness everybody together and uh, incidentally the jamaat is very very keen on elections now mm-hmm. because they would like to see an elected government who they will vote for anybody's guess but do you believe mm-hmm. that the 370 abrogation yeah. uh which was much feared much debated uh-huh. turned out to be a non issue it was always a non issue and it was not never really debated you know there was nothing to debate over 370 because there was no 370 i mean in reality yeah there was a provision in the constitution yeah. and you removed it okay so point is 370 had gone in 1975 when sheikh saab entered into the accord with uh, mrs gandhi indira gandhi and uh, there was nothing left because when he said that accession was irrevocable uh, that was the end of the matter and dr saab keeps saying all over the place that he was born in india and he will die in india and you know how many times he wanted to say it mm. and uh, so the, the thing is that yeah when it happened my the the thing in my mind or my argument was why would you want to remove something which really doesn't exist it's only in the mind you know because it was only a fig leaf for the kashmiri now you removed it so i was critical at that point of time but i realized over a period of time that what is gone is gone it's not going to come back the yeah. matter is sub judice but i don't expect it to come back but do you acknowledge that things in kashmir today uh-huh. you know the app, for example there was a time when every after friday prayers you went into downtown srinagar there was always some sort of street protest you went in as somebody who was seen as uh, a nationalist indian there would be stones thrown at you or stones thrown at your car uh, pelting stones was a great instrument of expressing anger on the street yeah. there hasn't been that kind of street protest now for for a long time yeah i I'll, I'll, I'll tell you that uh, i was myself surprised because i thought there would be protests and somewhere or the other the, the youth would give vent to their expression and uh, but again just to reiterate 370 in the course of time i realized that uh, it was done dusted and the kashmiri is also beginning to reconcile to it he won't say it mm. you know I mean, uh, he he might admit it to me and you, but he won't say it if there's a foreigner there openly there. And uh, so uh, that is that. Now I went to Kashmir the first time. I went to Kashmir after the abrogation. I don't remember exactly when. Uh, must have been in twenty. And I met some youngsters, and I said, well, "What's happening?" so it reminded me of something like you know 1857 the time of uh, what we call the war of independence or the, mm. or the mutiny whatever way you look at it 
and that everything had gone quiet. And the, the message, the, the, the thing I got out of there was that the Kashmiri has decided now, decided not to die cheap. And they said that now they don't even put out, they don't express anything. It's, uh, if there is a message, it's passed by word of mouth you know, in downtown Srinagar. And even today, the most frightening thing in Kashmir, because tourism is booming, there's no doubt about it. And everything looks hunky-dory now. It's the silence on the street, you know. When you, when you meet Kashmiris, they, they say, nothing. What does that mean, nothing? That's what is dangerous. I feel is dangerous. That nothingness is dangerous. And you hear Mehbubha say things, you hear Umar say things, you hear Sajjad say things, which are not uh, exactly complimentary. How do you reconcile those things with the fact that, as you said, tourism is booming, uh, you have restaurants open, the city looks, you know, Fantastic. New and fantastic. The city, let me explain the city to you. This is the G20 city. Correct. Along the Dow. Which in itself is a pretty but, which in itself is a pretty strong statement to make geopolitically. I'm telling you, it is the city from Dalgate to Nishad Gardens. I was surprised. I saw Dow Decker buses flying up and down. And that boulevard is I mean, it always there's a traffic jam there. It's so this thing. But it's there. That's not the city. You go to downtown. You know. I went to Nagin. Yes. I hadn't been for a few years. I said, let's go and look at Nagin. So you go through Ranawari. It's the old ramshackle city. Nothing different there. There's no tourism there. Mm. Tourism is here. Yeah. And like you said, new restaurant, new eateries have opened. Yes. There's a fantastic uh, confectionery shop there, La Dadris. Yes. Huh? Yes. Fantastic bakery. I mean, we went there two, three times. It was so good. I don't think Delhi has a better. So, place. so do you concede, therefore, hmm. that some things have changed for the better? Yeah, they have. Of course. What are they? List them. Apart from tourism, what has brought about this change? I think the more important point is what has brought about this change. What has brought about the change is that an understanding that 370 is gone. Yes. That whole idea of you know being different or separate or whatever it is as i said separatism hasn't totally gone but that idea that uh, you know uh, we are different or we are that there is there is a gradual compromise there and i think that is where we are missing a trick because uh, the the mainstream what we call the mainstream is growing mm -hmm. and we are not taking advantage of it let me give you an example Mumir is, uh, is an example of it. You mentioned, uh, you know, stone pelting after Friday prayers. Friday prayer prayers have virtually stopped because the Mumir is not allowed out. Mm. He's the Pope there and he, he is under sort of house arrest. So the point is, and I think we are missing out on, on, on the Mumir because I think Pakistan is over now. At least for the time being. If Pakistan comes back, it will be our fault because Pakistan is gone. It's not in the mind. It's just, a, you know, always has been a fallback position for Kashmir and Kashmiri. But to get it totally out of the mind is that, and that's what we've been trying to do since 1947, mainstream Kashmir. Mm -hmm. And Kashmir has been mainstream. Now the BJP can take all the credit for for abrogating 370 and say, this is the final mm -hmm. mainstreaming. Yeah, okay, maybe as an argument, it's all right. But it's been happening over a period of time. When Sheikh Saab entered into that accord, I think that uh, that was a watershed moment. That was really the mainstreaming of Kashmir. So, so, so and that's what I'm trying to say, that if you get the mean wires in, mm. apart from the National Conference and the PDP and Sajjad and Altaf and whatever it is, uh, it will be a big thing. So the Modi government, I think, would argue mm -hmm. that there used to be an old way of handling Kashmir. Absolutely. And, and now there's a new way of handling sure, Kashmir. Sure, sure, sure. You would agree with that? I agree. So they I don't argue with that. And probably maybe this is a better view. Time will tell. Okay.